Hey guys, I am back. I don't know if you guys uh, have known, but I, uh, I've been on paternity leave for about four weeks. We just had our fourth child, uh, baby lion. Here's a pic uh, just to check out his cuteness. Um, he's an awesome child. Everything is healthy. But I am back. I'm here to give the word to you guys. Um, actually, uh, because uh, we just had a child, it's appropriate that I'm teaching uh, one of the promises uh, uh, that God has given us through the Ten Commandments, and it's to honor your father and mother, and it comes with a promise. And so here I am right off a of paternity to leave to give you this word. Um, but here's the thing. I want to start off with the main scripture that we've been kind of talking about in this whole series about promises, and it's in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 4, and it says this. It says, and, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. And I love this verse because basically it's saying God has given us promises. He has promised us stuff, and he's never gone back on his promises. His promises have never failed. And those promises are here to help us, to enable us, um, to help our lives, to uh, help us escape the, the, the wrong things of this world and to stand on his word. And so, like I said, the one I'm going to be talking about today is one of the Ten Commandments that comes with the promise. And I'm going to read uh, what Paul wrote in Ephesians about this commandment. It says this, and this is actually one of the first promises that I ever realized when I was a young Christian. I got saved when I was eight years old. And, and these are the, the, one of the first one that I actually realized, like, this is a promise of God. This is pretty awesome. And it says this, Ephesians 6, verse 2, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. And when I heard this, I was like, yes, I want a long life. Okay, I'm going to honor my, my father and mother. And before I even get into the word, I want to actually practice this commandment right now. Um, we're going to show a pic of my mom and dad. And, uh, you know, a lot of you guys know my mom and dad. They are pillars of this church. They've been going here since the 80s. And I, I just want to honor them because they are worth honoring. My dad is an incredible uh, man who has the supernatural gift of hospitality. Uh, many of you guys have been in our house, eaten his food, just known my dad as someone that will love you unconditionally. And a lot of you guys know my mom, who's on the prayer team, just faithful, reading the word of God. And just an incredible woman uh, that also has unconditional love and, and will pray and, and will love you. And it's just uh, uh, two people that have loved Jesus for a very long time. And I just wanted to honor them. They are, they are incredible people. But here's, here's what this commandment says about honoring your, your father and mother that comes with a promise. What's the promise? One, things will go well. Two, because things are going well, you will live a long life. And I was, I was thinking about this. What's the opposite? If you don't honor your father and mother, if you disobey your parents, well, what it's saying and what this promise is saying, well, things aren't going to go well. And because things aren't going to go well, it might shorten your life. And so here's this promise going, guys, this is important. This matters. And I get it. There's rules and regulations and commandments in the Bible that you kind of look at and go, okay, I guess I have to obey them. And, and it, it's one of these, okay, I'll do it because you say so, God. And it's in the Bible. But here's the one thing that I've learned that you need to ask why uh, those commandments are there in the first place. And I learned, you know, I learned this from my, my youth pastor. I'm going to give props to Jeff McKay when I was a junior hire. I remember I was in a, a connect group and uh, we got to the commandment, you know, do not steal. And, and he, he asked us, why? I mean, it was like one of the most important, like why? You know, it says don't do it. It says don't steal. And we shouldn't do it because the Bible says so. But that's not a good enough reason. Ask why? And so we had this long, awesome connect group of, whoa, it breaks trust. It breaks community. And so I learned an important lesson that day is when you see the commandments in the Bible, ask why. Why 
is it so important for God for us to follow these? And, and I want to ask the same question today about this commandment that comes along with this incredible promise of things going well and a long life. And here's, the, here's kind of my, my main point. By honoring your father and mon- mother, you become someone that's honorable. And, and I think it's this generational thing is of honoring is you honor them, you become honorable, and then you become someone that, that people will honor you. And, it, and, and, and just community grows stronger, healthier, families are healthier and stronger. And so that's kind of my main point, that if you're honorable to your parents, you'll become honorable. And, and here's the thing. I want to answer this why question. Why does honoring your father and mother matter to God? I mean, I want to put this into context a little bit. It, this is the first commandment right after the top four, which is about worshiping God. It's about your relationship with God. The other, the last six, were all about how to um, deal with other people, what you shouldn't do, what you should do. And this is the very first one about dealing with other people. And the first one, it, it's about your parents, honoring your father and mother. And so here, I'm going to a- answer this question. Why should we honor uh, your father and mother? Why does that matter to God? And number one is this. They're worth honoring. They're worth your honor. Um, number one, why? They gave you life. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. You are not self-originating, which means you didn't make yourself. Your parents made God. God, through God and their, their DNA, you were made, right? You didn't make yourself, which means you're unique as well. In, in, in Psalm 139, it says this. is a beautiful scripture. You made... Uh, this is talking to God. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. I love that. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. Here's someone that's realizing, wow, I'm unique. I'm a masterpiece. I, you, God, you made me delica- delicately um, and I'm wonderfully complex. Well, who did God use to make your uniqueness, your parents, their DNA, their, unique, your, their uniqueness came together to make you. I got the wonderful gift of being short for my parents, <laughs> and I love my height. I'm okay with it. Um, thank you, mom and dad. Um, you get that from them. Number, the, the second reason why um, they're worth your honor is that they are God's appointed authority in your life. As a, as a child, they took care of you. They changed your diapers, whether you knew it or not. You depended on them in your, in your earlier years, and they were there for you. And here's an interesting point. I talked about the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Jewish traditionally taught that the commandments were written on two tablets, right? And so there's five on each side. Uh, and I think it's interesting. I was reading a commentary that, <clears throat> like I said before, that the first four commandments were all about worshiping God. Right? You should worship, worship God alone. And then the fifth commandment is honor your father and mother, which is on the first tablet, if, you, if it makes sense. And really, it's the first of the important ones about relationship with others. Because what, what, what they were teaching, the Jewish would teach, is that honoring your father and mother is like honoring God himself. Is that, <laughs> in, in really, in your younger years, they are God to you. They are your protector, your provider, they're, they're doing it all for you. Um, you know, I was kind of thinking about this, you know, how God took care of the Israelites in, in the wilderness, right? They had, um, remember in the story where they're, before they entered the promised land, God provided manna and quail and all this food for them, just miraculous. And so I was thinking about this, like, I had, I had manna every single morning before I went to school from the heaven, heavenly realm of my dad's kitchen. <laughs> my dad would... Every morning before school, I remember this, would cook me Vienna sausage, rice, and, and a, um, an over, a over easy egg. And to this day, I love Vienna sausage. I'm sorry. I know some of you guys are like, eh. I, I even love it more than spam. I can eat eggs every single day. And I believe, when I, lo- I thought about that, I'm like, that was from that day when my dad took care of me. 
He gave me food. He was like, wow, he provided for me. He knew that I needed the nourishment to go to school. And so that's a, that, that's a huge uh, memory in, in my book. Um, and, and so here's a, those, those two reasons alone. They gave you life, and, and it, they're God's given authority over your life, and they took care of you. And here's the thing. I want to be very, very honest, because here's the one thing I want to say, too. So you have to remember this, that all parents are flawed. There is no perfect parent. There's, are, there, there's good parents, but they're not perfect as well. And I'm going to be honest. I know there's been bad parents out there. And for some of you, you've suffered from bad parents. You've been abandoned. You've been abused. Maybe physically, emotionally, even sexually. And I want to say, so, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And you're probably wondering, Tom, wow, you're telling me I have to my, honor my father and my mother, and they didn't deserve it? And I, I get it. And here's the one thing I want to say about this commandment. This commandment is not so much about who deserves honor or not. It's about recognizing the gift of life. The gift of life that was given to you by God through the parents that gave birth to you. And I get it. There's some guys that they don't deserve the honor. They hurt you. There's pain. And, and here's, here's a couple things that I want to just give you some advice. If possible, make peace with your parents. Be honest with your parents. Reconcile with your parents if, if, if you can. And that's a way of honoring them. I think, I think being honest with your parents is honoring them as well. And if making peace is not possible, here's my second advice for you. And this is for everybody who's been hurt by, by their father or their mother, is just forgive them. Just forgive them. And it's not justifying their actions. It's not saying that what they did was okay. What it's, it's doing is it's letting go of the pain that it's caused you. It's letting go of the hurt so it, it can't continue in your life anymore. I love in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, and I, I pray that, that prayer a lot. I've preached that before. Is in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, it, tells, it asks you to, to, for, to ask God, forgive me of my sins. And then in the next line it says, and forgive uh, Others that have offended me as well. That you, you have to forgive. You have to ask your own forgiveness, and then you have to forgive others that have offended you or sinned against you as well. And, and in that Lord's Prayer, it's always checking your heart. It's going, God, where's that hurt a little bit? Okay, God, I have to actually forgive them. It's not justifying what they did, but it's letting go of the pain so that you get get to move on. And here's a verse that I want you guys to hold on to if the, if this is you. And in Psalm 27, verse 10, it says this. Even if my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. And I want to remind you, that's a promise. That if you have been abandoned, God will not abandon you. If your parents have failed you, God will not fail you. I want, you to, I want to ask that you cling to God Cling to God as you make peace with your parents. Cling to God as you ask for forgiveness and forgive them as well. And so uh, just, just a little bit of advice for that. The second thing of why I believe honoring your parents uh, matters to God and matters to, to us as well is that it's an anecdote to, um, not a- antidote, not an anecdote. It's an, an antidote to self-centeredness that I believe that as you honor your mother and, and father, you learn to kind of, not think about yourself anymore, that you live for other people as well, which God has called us to do. And, and Paul makes it pretty clear what happens if you don't honor your, your father and mother, it, mother, if you actually disobey them. It says, this, I'm going to share two verses. In Romans 1, verse 28, it says this. This is pretty harsh. It says this. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, 
quarreling, deception, malicious, ma malicious behavior, and gossip. They're backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. Now, I'm going to be honest. I've always struggled with this verse because it's like, wow, these are some pretty heavy sins. I mean, there's like wicked, wickedness, murder. There's haters of God in this. And then the last one is disobey their parents. And I'm like, okay, wait, I've never committed murder or, you know, I've, I've, I've never been that bad, but I've definitely disobeyed my parents. And I think for all of us, we've all gone through that rebellious uh, phase in our lives and we were diso uh, 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 di we disobeyed our parents. I mean, I, I remember I, you know, junior high, I was a heavy metal head and I wanted to go to the Ozzy Osbourne concert. So, and I know my parents disapproved, especially my mom disapproved, brand new Christian, didn't want me to listen to this, you know, this kind of music. And so I lied to my mom. I'm like, you know, Ozzy Osbourne came into town and uh, um, I said, mom, I like, you know, I have a Spanish club meeting that I need to get to. And so I told my mom that I, I had a Spanish club meeting and I went to go see Ozzy Osbourne. I was a disobedient child. I turned out pretty good, right? Right, mom? Thanks. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, but we, we've gone through that phase. And so here's what I, what I struggle with this, um, this verse is like, wow, all these harsh sins and then disobeying your parents was in, in the midst of it. And, and I, I want to read the, the other verse that Paul talks about in 2 Timothy. That I think he hits the nail on the head on, on why. And it says this. You should know this, Timothy. That in the, in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents. There it is. And ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. And I, and I think there's the key right there. That a lot of the pretty hardcore wicked, wickedness, Paul says right here, the root of it is love of yourself. That there's self-centeredness -centered, going on. That the root of bad behavior is selfishness, pride, narcissism. I don't know if you know what that word is. A narcissist is someone that has self-love for themselves, that they're all that in a bag of chips, and it's all about the whole world revolves around them. Um, you know, sad to say, I read an art article recently that, um, that there's been a study that, that there's, there's an epidemic of pastors who are narcissistic, which means they have become, they've built this kind of, world around them that just revolves around them, that it's no longer about God, but it's about themselves. And it made me wonder if pastors, if there's an epidemic of pastors becoming narcissistic, how many people out there that are just normal people that are dealing with that selfishness, that, <laughs> that God complex, that, man, the world revolves around me. And here's the one thing that I believe this commandment, and, that, and that's why I believe it's on the first tablet of the commandments, that it gets us out of ourselves, that, that our life, when you honor your, your father and mother, my life is not my own, that it's, it's beyond me, that I get to, my, the first neighbor that I get to love and honor is, is the people that created me, the people that gave me, gave me life, that I realized that my parents, they sacrificed a lot for me when they took care of me, right? I mean, I have a newborn. That's some hard work. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's hard work. It's, it's way harder work for my wife. I mean, lack of sleep, changing diapers. I mean, the sacrifice, I can't go surfing anymore. It's crazy, right? The sacrifice that my parents made, and I was thinking about it, and the sacrifice that my grandparents made, coming all the way from the Philippines and, and finding a better life, and here I am, you know, in, in Hawaii, so grateful for that. And, and you, know, you know what? When you learn how to honor your father and mother, I think what comes out of it, the result of it, is gratitude. That you're just so thankful for the life that was provided for you, that the life that you live now, good or bad parents or not, that the life you're living now, you were given that gift, and you should be grateful for it. And what I think that also helps us not do is to feel entitled, right? That you're, you're thankful Rather, you're thanking uh, for what you have rather than, wow, this is what I deserve and this is what I, I should have. 
And I, I, I believe that when we get that attitude and you get that value of honoring your parents, is it, it, it kills the self-centeredness. It kills the, the pride a little bit and goes, you know what? There's more to life than just my life that I need to, to give myself to others as well. And you know what? Think about it. This is good for the world. This is good for community. This is good for society. I mean, you don't have to uh, go very far to Google, like, what? how do you have a good society? Well, have a good family structure, right? A, a place of there's honor and love and respect, and there's a good family unit going. When the, the, We know that the fa- if the families are stronger, community is stronger, society is stronger. And, uh, I mean, think about it. If we're just, like, kind of getting uh, uh, out of ourselves, getting rid of our pride and our self-centeredness and going, you know what, I have to think uh, above and beyond myself. I think that's going to be an incredible world. And so um, I, I believe that commandment with that promise um, is is an uh, antidote to self-centeredness. The third thing, and here's the one thing I want to close with. I believe this commandment that comes along with this incredible promise of long life and things going well, it challenges you and me to become honorable people. That we, this will challenge us to go, you know what, one day, and it's already happened, I'm a father already, there's, there's little kids looking up to me, that I want to become someone that is worth honor. That, that I, have to, I have to be honest about, okay, what's, what are some of the, my, my flaws? Where, where am I lacking? How can I get better? How can I become a better, better, fa- be- better father, spouse, how can I be a better person, period? And so I think this commandment's all about, man, looking inside. You know, there's this, um, this saying I, 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 a couple pastors would say. It's like, you know what? A lot of us want to point fingers at other people and, and, you know, blame and be the victim. And we want to go, oh, they did this and they did that. And sometimes, maybe a lot of times, we need to start pointing the thumbs back to us, going, you know what? Get some self-reflection and going, what do I need to work at? What do I need to work on? How, how can I improve my character? How can I be someone that's worth honor? And uh, um, I want to read in Ephesians 6, verse 4, it says this. This is the verse right after uh, Paul was, was reminding people about the fifth commandment, about honoring your father and mother, that you will help, you, things will go well and, and a long life. And then he says this. In, in verse 4, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And I distinctly remember this verse because I was a young kid. And I remember, you know, me and my mom, <laughs> we would get into some pretty heavy fights. I mean, that's just, you know, typical and uh, I remember we got into one, I think it was the night before church, we were going to a church in Kahalu, and I was a young kid, and you know, I, I remember I had to sit in service, so I didn't listen to the sermon at all. I, w- I remember staring at the floor and going, uh, when can we get out of here? And um, I remember, I distinctly remember driving home, and my mom kind of just turned to me, and she quoted this verse. She said, you know what? The preacher was preaching about that fathers and parents shouldn't provoke their children to anger. And I, I remember her kind of apologizing to me, saying, you know, I'm sorry that, that, that she made me angry. And my first reaction, of course, was pretty childish. But I was like, thank you, word of God. Yeah. Chuck went up for Tom, you know. Um, and I was pretty stoked that, wow, okay, it's awesome. It's not about just me obeying. But parents have a responsibility as well. And you know what? That's the, the one thing that top about my mom, and, and to, to, to this day, my mom is still like that, that as parents, we need to be teachable. And my mom is, to this day, still teachable. And she proved to me that day, even when I was really, really young, I still remember that, that how teachable and humble my mom was to even say sorry to a little kid of, of sorry, I upset you, and, and you know what? I should do better. And I, I learned from that, that we should all do better. And you know the thing about that verse? Um, it says this, that bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And I think so many of us look at the word discipline, and immediately we go to punishment. 
and we go to, you know, whatever there's a consequence or teaching, teaching our children a lesson, which is, I think, very necessary. But the one thing we have to realize is that discipline is from the word, the English word, disciple. And what, what that does, it reminds me that I'm not just about punishing my children. I'm also teaching them good behavior as well, that I'm passing down good values to them, that I should disciple them like as much as Jesus discipled his disciples into changing the world, that he didn't just punish them and scold them. and He passed down love, compassion, grace, faith in God to them. He, he passed something down to them that we are experiencing in the world today. They changed the world. Uh, with his disciples. And so, and, and to be honest with you, every single one of us, whether you're a parent or not, we're called to make disciples. And, and so, in this sense, we have to look at ourselves and go, okay, am I worth following? There was a, um, I went to a conference one, once, and uh, I saw Francis Chan. He's a famous uh, Christian author. And he probably preached one of the most convicting sermons. It was really, really good that I've ever heard. And really, all he asked, he asked the question, and these are, this is a room full of pastors, of staff members at this conference. And he asked, would you want another you? And he was asking all of us leaders, saying, if you duplicated yourself, would that be a good thing? And it was a heavy moment. The aftermath of that sermon, there were tears. There were, you could tell pastors were struggling with, man, I got to work on my, so there, you could tell the whole room was playing thumbs at themselves and going, how can I get better at this? How can I be a better discipler, a mentor to someone? Um, and, you know, one of my favorite verses for a long time is in Romans 12, verse 1, and, and, and it says this. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. And here's the, one, the, the part of the verse that I want to point out. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I love this verse because it's saying, you know what, give your bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Just give it over to God and let God change your mind, transform your mind, change your mind. There's things in our, our, our brain that are locked that might have been passed down from our parents or just bad habits or whatever it is that character flaws. When we point our, the thumbs at ourselves and please, I'm not trying to condemn anyone here. I'm just saying, work on it. Look at yourself. Be honest going, what can I work on? And I love this verse because it's just dive into God and let God transform your mind, renew your mind into, into something new, something better, something different. And, and really what I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you guys is just by becoming someone that, that's honorable, that, that you would just move towards that person today, that you would imagine who that person is and just take a small step towards that person, right? Um, stop blaming other people and going, you know, I'm going to take responsibility for my, my faults, my mistakes, even the pain that was caused by other people. You know, uh, when I, th I think about this, I think about my dad. My, you know, I didn't really know this about my dad until later in my life. But my dad had seven brothers and sisters or something like that. Big, huge family. And he was one of the kids that was chosen to be passed off to his grandparents. He, he literally, his family said, no, there's not enough room in this family. You need to go to another family. And like, just, just on the face value of hearing that, that's heartbreaking to me. That I, I couldn't imagine giving one of my kids to another family even if it's a good family, like grandparents or whatever. I, it's like, no, I want to take care of my own kids. And so here my dad 
was one of the ones that was raised, not by his parents. His dad died when he was really, really young. But he was raised by his grandparents and his aunties. And, you know, the one thing that I'm so in awe of my dad is that that could have gone wrong. He, he could have took that into a bitter place, in, into a place where he had a totally different life. But my dad was a hard worker. He did it. He worked hard, went to school, you know, went to culinary, culinary school and, and did that, worked really hard and made a family and here I am. And, and you know what? I, I believe this, that he didn't pass that legacy down to me. He stopped it and go, you know what? I want something different for my sons. I want something different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a whole family. And that's an inspiration to me that my, my dad rose above his circumstances and stopped this generational curse and said, nope, I'm not going to pass that down. And that's the one thing I want to encourage you guys is that, that you would make life better for you and for the people around you, that you would become a better person, that, that you would honor your parents by passing on the good things, the legacy, that if there's bad things in your life, the bad things that have happened to your life, bad parents, that you would stop that and start anew in Jesus Christ, changing your mindset and moving forward and moving into that person that God has intended, intended for you to be, that honorable person, that loving person, that compassionate person. There's a, I want to close with this. this is a, um, I just read this. I was, I was going through a devotional called um, Father like the father. And the, the whole thing was, you know, it was for fathers, but it's, it was saying, love your kids like the heavenly father loves you. And so there was a, an eye-opening um, devotional about the scripture about Adam and Eve. And, you know, God had to, you know, Adam and Eve sinned. They, they ate of that tree and they had to get kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And here's the one verse that totally I missed throughout my whole life. But through this devotional was kind of made clear to me. It was that, yes, he had to discipline them, but it also says this, that God made close for them. And I thought, man, that's a, that's a kind of a beautiful picture where, yes, God had to discipline them, but he also showed compassion for them. He also, also loved them and took the think about these these the Adam and Eve going, oh my gosh, we, we got kicked out. I'm sore. It's our fault. And here's God go, you know what? I'm gonna be here with you guys. I made these clothes for you guys. As a good father, sending his kids out. Don't worry. I love you. What a beautiful picture. And so here's a challenge for you guys is that. That you would find a way this week to honor your parents somehow. I don't know how that looks like for you, but find a way. How, how are you going to honor your parents in a way? And then the second challenge that I want to challenge you guys is start becoming someone that's honorable. Do it in shorter bites. Walk in the grace of God. You're forgiven. Don't forget that. You're covered in the grace of the Lord. Start Little by little, start reading the word of God. Start praying. Start playing soccer with your son. I don't know what it is, but start being, forget your yesterdays, and you know what? Move on to who God has, has intended you to be. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for being the father that you are, the loving example of an awesome, incredible father. Lord, as we love you, you teach us how to love. And Lord, I pray that you would teach all of us, whatever stage of life we are in, to honor our, our parents, our father and mother, the, the people that gave us life. And in that process, God, that we would learn how to be honorable, that we would be great parents, mentors, disciplers to the next generation, that they, they would look to us and go, I want to be like that guy. I want to be like that, that, that woman. Lord, thank you for that. We praise you. We love you. Thank you for your promise that as we do that, 
that things will go well, and that we would have a long life. In Jesus' precious name. I want to say one more prayer, and, for that, and that's for anybody that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus, if you've never made that commitment, I want to pray with you right now. And if you want that, just follow along, hitchhike off my words right now. Lord Jesus, I believe what you did on the cross for me. You died. You died to forgive me of my sins. You rose again on the third day. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And because of that, I want to give you my life. I surrender my life over to you. I declare that I believe what you did for me, that you gave me new life, that I'm a new creation, that I'm an adopted child of God, and that when I pass from this earth, I get to see you in heaven. I get to join you for eternity. Thank you for that. Thank you for conquering sin and death in my life. I make you my Lord and Savior right now. In Jesus' precious name, we all pray. Amen. All right, guys. Have a great week. God bless.